I've had the privilege this month to be working with the new um, Kickstarter um, Echo Shea models from um, 3D Total. Um, the one that I'm working with today is this one, which is the full 100% um, Echo Shea, obviously both sides. The, the first one that I backed and, and got hold of was the 50-50 skin and Echo Shea which was great and I use it every day. But the one thing I wanted at that point was to have the full Ecoche both sides. So um, quite often I find with sculpting, as long as you get the muscles right and at this level, then the, once I do the final pass, um, the skin pass, I don't need the reference as much as I do with this. So when I got the, the opportunity to back them for the um, for this one, um, then obviously yeah, th th this was the one that was on my list. Um, as you can see from the lighting um, that I've, I've been using uh, on screen here, when you pass lights around these small uh, reference models, you can get all of the shading detail that you want. It really clearly shows the muscle detail, shows the muscle groups well, lots of drop shadows in the in the darker areas. Um, and I, f I find it such a useful tool for a number of things, really. So st right the way from um, my sketching in, in the moleskin, through to um, well, in fact, I can show you some examples. Well, this is this is a working moleskin, um, and again, it's not in any way prepared for this. It's just um, the stuff that I, I tend to do, and I, I tend to use these models for. Um, very, very, very useful for working out muscle groups um, um, and working out muscle definition. And if you want a quick reference without having to go to to a reference book. The quickest thing to do is to pick up your your uh, 3D total model um, or or an Echo Shea maquette. So today, what I'm probably going to do is work down and just pick an area. So I was thinking maybe first of all I'll do the arm area, which is the forearm for me is one of the hardest areas of the body to get right because there's so many complex muscles overlaid. Um, the forearm, the back, and the head are the three that I find the most complex to remember. Um, and don't forget you're working with, um, when you're learning anatomy, you've got to learn the insertion and origin points of every muscle to the, every muscle that you'll see on the surface. Um, and it's, it's so hard to remember these muscle groups without some kind of reference at hand. Um, so that's that one. And the next one we've got is, uh, we probably won't look at it in this video, but I just wanted to show you because um, it's a great companion to that first one. This is the full planar. Um, and he has got some amazing detail. The planes um, really help you. I find it more helpful for sketching, um, but when you're blocking out in ZBrush, um, this is fantastic. It, it really does show um, where all of the uh, where all of the planes lie. You can see the the, the, the clear muscle groups in the pecs, the chest, down into the the abdomen. Um, doesn't show you anything like it, the, this traditional six pack that you see everybody putting in there um, uh, and it just helps you with the the, the, the bottom of the the, the, um, the thoracic arch there the the bottom of the rib cage um, uh, uh, straight through to the sides here you can clearly see um, the latissimus dorsi at the side really useful um, the the main reason I use it is, as I say, for sketching, uh, and it's it's pretty much what we'll do with it for the for the first time of me using it, which is a, a I'll do a sketch um, and do some lighting tests with it. So let's start in ZBrush and let's just do a base mesh quickly, and then I'll start and do some uh, some detailed sculpting using the first guy, which is the 100% Echo Shea. So we're starting in ZBrush with the uh, with the really, really, really basic setup. So what I've done is I've taken a, a Z-Sphere and I'm um, obviously this is speeded up. So this is about a 30 minute process uh, and I think we're, we're down to about 10 minutes here. So all I've done is taken a Z-Sphere and I basically used a combination of, uh, even though at the start we said we'd use the uh, just the 100% Echo Shea, I've, I've, I switched between the planar and the, the Echo Shea j just really to look for scale. 
Um, and the first thing I do, and it really doesn't matter how you do this, is I, I just build an armature. Um, and as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm making a biped armature. I'm not thinking about volume, I'm not thinking about e even the pose, uh, all I'm doing at the moment, I'm not even really looking at the, mm. the maquettes at the moment. So I'm just putting in every joint that we know we want. <coughs> so you can see hip, um, down to the, uh, the femur, down to the, uh, right down to the foot, <coughs> and I've just put a foot in, I've just put an arm and a leg and a head, and that, that's all I've done. I just did a little quick bit of uh, polygrouping so the arms are a set, the heads are set, um, the bodies are set. Um, and that just gives me the ability to turn bits on and off. Uh, probably won't even use that for this, but it's just force of habit. So I've made it a unified mesh, um, or an adaptive mesh, sorry, and then that basically just means turned it into polygons. And I'm starting to now look at the, the model a little bit. Um, just in again in terms of n now I've got uh, the, the arms and legs and uh, what I want in place I'm now just quickly looking at, at the human form and some of this is is memory because obviously you you know you do a lot of, of, of these kind of models over time um, and, and you, you, you obviously get to memorize some of the muscles um, but it's great to have sat next to you while you're modeling this the the, the, the actual echo show model um, so all I'm doing now is putting in volume um, to, to, to say right th later on I'm going to need this and today I'm probably only going to use it for the arms but what I like to do if I'm starting from scratch is just make a, something to hold the whole body um, just building building up the, the, the calf muscles going down into the foot uh, um, a little bit of definition in the, in the gluteus maximus or the, the butt cheeks um, and then just literally just working and remembering the major muscle groups and just putting in a lump. There's no accuracy in this other than there is a lump there that will become something to draw on. And as, as you'll see in a moment, I'll just smooth all that out anyway. Um, but what it gives me to, to, to start on is um, something in the right place. Now, it, it doesn't look in any way accurate um, and it's not in the right place. So depending on who you, you learnt your anatomy from, um, the, one of the main measuring tools that, that's been around for for a few hundred years is is or the canon I suppose is the correct terminology is the uh, seven and a half heads tall and what that basically means is it's four heads worth so that the height of the head four times down brings you to the groin and then um, three and a half up um, gives you uh, t just above that area of the groin which I'll show you in a minute in, in ZBrush um, if I'm scaling, what I'll do is I'll take the head that I've made, um, which you'll see in a minute, and then using the um, transpose line, as you can see there, I just wanted to reshape the head slightly to get the head's to head to the right shape. I basically set that head um, as one, and then in the preferences and units with the transpose line, I set that to one, and then I know I'm always going to be working to one head is one unit. So anything that's seven and a half is the full height of the figure. And you'll s and if you if you measure the um, the three D total figure, it's it's a pretty standard measurement. Um, so you don't really need to be looking at the figure for this, but, but obviously it's good to be aware of it. Um, you can see me there setting the the units to one. Uh, one head is one unit, um, and then what I basically do is then one head down um, is one head height. Another head down is to the nipple um, on the pectoral muscle. Another head down is to the belly button. Another head down is to the groin line. And then if you work upwards, then you come up from the foot uh, and do the same up, um, do three and a half heads that way. Uh, and that gives you the full seven and a half heads height. Um, not really doing this video about that, but it's good to know that. And if you don't know that, go and get Richet's book from 1893, I think it is. And he's pretty much where I learned most of my uh, ana anatomy from, basics. Probably most of the, um, most of the training and books that you see out there have, have used him as a reference uh, and, and the work that he did back in the, the 1800s um, and if you've ever done any of Scott Eaton's um, on anatomy courses which are probably the, the, the best in the world and he refers to Richet all the time um, and simply because it's still the, the, the one of the most accurate um, piece of works uh, available so I'm just blocking in um, now I've got the scaling right I'm just putting something like a muscle where I know it belongs 
um, again not in any way accurate because this is our base mesh and I'm going to dyna mesh it in a moment which means I'll just give it an even distribution of polygons but already you know you can start seeing where the planar is useful I've got a bit of a pinch in the arm there so all I was doing is just flattening it out and, and dyna meshing it to get rid of it um, looks like I'm detailing it and I'm not I was just trying to repair a, a little bit of bad geometry um, and at the minute I'm referring to the uh, planar model and you can see me using the flatten brush there and I'm just matching the planes of the planar model um, again we said we were going to just use the echo shade but it's so easy to switch between um, and that's the base mesh so what we're going to do now is we're going to put it on to normal time and we'll use that as our mesh Before we launch into ZBrush I thought I'd better just uh, clarify what I was saying then about proportions just in case anyone's not familiar with it. Um, this is a standard image you find in a lot of, of places um, and it gives you some examples so you got a heroic nine heads so if you can see one head height and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and a half and a half. It gives you nine heads on that one. Clearly heroic, clearly huge, uh, two and two thirds head wide. Fashion similar, out of proportion. A lot of people do do eight heads, uh, which is eight full heads, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, um, which you see quite a lot, or I've seen quite a lot um, over the years. But the one that is clearly the most accurate and been used for certainly in, in a lot of reference material for the last 100 plus years that I, that I can see, and probably a heck of a lot longer, um, is the seven and a half heads and as I was saying um, if you take the, the, the single head height and you can see our boy here is uh, that's one head as we set in in ZBrush so head tip to chin is one down to nipple line is two and our guy clearly conforms to this cannon uh, down to belly button three slight variation there but bear, taking in mind perspective of the, of the lens of the camera when uh, he was taken and then four down that's the four down and then coming back up from the feet so let's go this way um, one two to the knee three to mid calf four to above the abdomen which gives you that line there one two three two three four one three four which is actually then where it joins the other one is three and a half so it's actually seven and a half heads tall um, and two heads wide is, is pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory as well. So it's this bit that sometimes causes confusion. So he's not a straight seven and a half heads um, in, a, in a linear way with half a head here as, as shown. Um, it's uh, four down, three and a half up gives you, oh, four up gives you the, when you take out the half, it gives you seven and a half heads. Um, and that'll give you a lot to, to uh, should give you a lot of confidence that um, this figure is is properly accurate, um, and uh, we'll prove that when we start modelling it. So let's start the the next stage um, and block in uh, a bit more. I'm just trying to find a material to. that shows up well on the screen so I will use that one uh, I'll just show you the mesh it's, it's dyna mesh so it's uh, it's quite high probably a bit too high really but it doesn't really matter uh, but high enough for what we want and then what I'll do is um, because we've got it um, we can we can do mirror and weld at any time we like you can see it's perfectly symmetrical I'll just hide a lot of it and work, I'll just work on this section here um, so using um, hiding, let's just do it correctly. Just trying to work out where I want it. So down to the hand, if that will do it like that. Um, and then take the symmetry off and just so. All I really want to see is kind of that.
is me not masking very well not hiding so that'll do for now that's all I want to see really um, so we'll start just by um, popping in the, the chest muscles and the pectorals just to make sure that we've got something to link into when we get down start going down the humerus so we're going to start we know we know there's a there's obviously this sternum in here and there's I'm, I'm looking at the reference model now um, and I know that this muscle comes across this is a pec comes in three major chunks across here it took me a while to get the brushes right so I've got this one that tucks under layered with this one it's right the way to the sternum as you saw me uh, in the last video, this little bit here was all wrong, so this is going to take me a while to get this right. Um, I didn't want that definition across there, so I'm just using a combination of flatten and, and build up. Uh, I'm only going to really use uh, clay build up or clay tubes if you prefer um, in this, and flatten, they're the only two, I'll, uh, and smooth as I go along. So let's just put Sternocleo mastoid, I think you call it. Um, and these are just positions. And then where this meets the. Most important acromion process, which is the part of the shoulder blade that is in here. And then this will be. I'm just going to turn the model a little bit um, just to make sure we're following his shoulders and then the bit of the trapezius here. Just the start of it comes right the way down here. We won't be doing much of this but I want to get a good chunk of definition in here. I quite often would work with symmetry on but I want to leave it off for this so we can have a real good look at what it looks like in the two halves, the first half undone and not done at all and how it's built up. So that's clearly built up. Um a lot of people ask and I'm I'm not the best in the world at remembering the names of all the muscles and people say how important is it? Well obviously it depends who you talk to. Um I li I like to know them. But I'm not that good at remembering all of them. The key ones I can always remember. Um, but what you do need to know is all the insertions and origins. So where does it insert to? So we know this one here inserts in two places. And if you have a look on the, the, the model, you can clearly see the separation um, in here. Now, that might be covered with a lot of skin um, and fat uh, on a lot of people. But if you, if you do the Ecoche model right, um, then at least you've, uh, y you know, if you're covering it up and you've done it right in the first place, it might show through the form, which is always useful. So, pause as I'm talking I'm doing quick saves because I want to be able to give you the models at the end of this just make sure with the clavicle that you get an S shape in here something that gets missed a lot if you look at the top of the um, full ecoche you can really see the S going into the acromion process here in the corner um, and the three head of the deltoids um, the three uh, parts of the deltoids sorry come and meet at this process you know this acromion process here and this is really crucial um, <coughs> so let's just make sure we get that right on on this particular part so if you follow that around, we'll have. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll draw it on where we're going to cut it in, and then that really shows what's shown on the model, even though the volume might not be there yet. Um, 
So the deltoid attaches here. And there's a crucial landmark down here. That if you look on your on your model, even though this is all wrong here, yeah, the volume's not right. That comes round right under the trapezius here, and it gives you almost this square where the, the three parts of the deltoid meet up here, um, from middle and back almost. Um, and we'll work on those uh, probably first now to get that kind of volume right. And those three muscles, so th th it's one muscle with th the, the group of three, gives you this centre point down here that sinks in and attaches to the humerus. Um, and that's crucial because that drives where we go with the front bit, which is the bicep here, the, the tricep here, and the, uh, the brachialis muscle in the middle there. So, let's just get this right. score it like that but uh, it's good to get it in there at this point just to uh, to make sure we know what we're doing so let me just adjust the volumes by using the move tool <coughs> so we want this deltoid quite chunky we want the trapezius even here and we probably need to go back in and just smooth this out now we've put the marks in um, we don't need that kind of scoring in the model. It was only really to show you where everything's going to go. Um, but we can put some volume in. This should come right round the back now. I'm just, if you can hear anything rattling, it's me turning the model because um, I'm trying to do it exactly from it. And we'll just put a couple of other muscles in here. So this is the teres major. You can see that this, it's scored quite nicely on the model. Terrace major and minor. And then this volume that's missing here, it's about time we put this in actually because it was bad from the start on this model. So I'm just, I'm not doing this accurately muscle wise. I'm just putting some volume in to put muscles onto. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So the accuracy is gone here for a few seconds. So let's have a look at this now. Um, so Terra's Major sits nicely on top of what will become the Latissimus Dorsi, which drags right under here and has got a clear definition right the way down. Your 11th and 12th ribs at the back are floating ribs, and they're down here somewhere, and they'll, they sometimes show through, but we're not particularly looking for them today because we're really focusing on the arm. So I'll just put a bit of this volume in. Always try and do the flow of the muscle, the, the final pass of the muscle, the way that the muscle goes from origin to insertion. Because um, that then looks like the striations um, are more accurate. Uh, and even though I've done this very roughly, you can already see that that looks quite accurate now. Um, just with like a few minutes really, um, it's given you some quite good definition. Um, and it's clearly shown on the model that it's 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 one thing having the model um, uh, something that's shown really well on it actually there's a there's a little dip in the trapezius here uh, as it snakes around to make sure you get that in there we go and there is actually a muscle that goes from here it's basically called the rhomboid and it's basically like that shape but it's buried underneath the trapezius and it only when we start moving up the uh, moving up the arm and moving the uh, the shoulder blade you see that one pops out that way so you don't always see it uh, one, one thing and one thing I, I get wrong a lot and a lot of people seem to get wrong is is the movement of the uh, the shoulder changes the dynamics of these muscles so much um, and obviously you have to learn how they are in in various different stages um, so the static model uh, is is a good is a good starting place when the when the body's stationary, but it's it's another thing when it's um, when it's moved into different positions. So uh, so let's just make these three 
heads of the deltoid a bit more clear. They're very, very well defined on the on the Ecochet model. Um, just turn him around, and you'll hear me turning him around. He's lovely, well defined there. Okay, so let's get the uh, the, the next bad boy. Um, So the one that everybody knows and the one that's clearly shown on this model tucks underneath there is this huge one, huge on some people, uh, not so big on people like me, is the bicep. It's probably the most common muscle, com or most well known muscle in the body I would have thought. Everyone seems to know the bicep. And that goes right round the back and then sits on top of this one, which we won't work on just yet, but we'll stick it in, and the front of it, which is the brachialis, and the brachialis is quite a flat, and you can see it quite clearly on the on the uh, on the Ecochet model, and it tucks under here and dips inside, but we do need to clearly show it, and it is shown quite clearly. If you want to do research to help you um, with this, um, it's great having obviously having the 3D total uh, figure all the time. But something that helped me was uh, one knowing knowing where these muscles are, and two getting an app or a, a book something and understand where the muscles start and where they end. Once you understand that, things be get be become much much easier. Now, my favourite muscle here. <coughs> so this is the um, head, uh, or the, sorry, the front side of the um, tricep. I'm just getting the right brush there. Um, <coughs> there's a common tendon that comes down the middle here. The tendon, just so as you you remember this, um, the tendon is the white stuff that connects the end of the muscle to the bone. Um, why is it not ligament? Well, mm. this collect connecting muscle to bone. Ligament connects bone to bone. So think of where your, your kneecap is, your patella, and that's the kneecap attached to the uh, to the to the front of the um, of your leg bone. <laughs> you notice when I stutter when I'm trying to work, and then uh, I can't remember. If you're in fibula, I'll just say leg bone, and that's me wigging out as I'm modelling. Um, so let's bring the uh, head, which is a top ball like structure here of the tricep, and then it comes down to a tail and then tucks round what is going to come out of here, which is going to be the most important ridge muscle in the arm, which goes right the way down the, the radius side. Of the arm, you can see these really clearly, really well defined on this, uh, on the double ecoche model. And I'm building up so you can see the egg and the end round there. It's just one muscle coming around here in the middle. So added the tricep at the back and the two parts of it. What we can do a little bit there um, doesn't quite match the model, so I'm just going to use deep inside. I'm just going to use the inflate. And it just pushes those muscles together. Um, like so. <coughs> just using the move brush, just to looking at the the model when I'm in a particular angle to just refine it back. You can see now why I wanted to leave this half because um, it really just show. 
quite well the difference that you're you're making um, as you as you build up the muscles. I'm going to do a quick save now, so we've got this part of the model as well. So I always had that bump on there that I've not liked, so I'm going to smooth that out. Maybe put that back a tiny bit. There we go. See, as I've added more, I've had to go back and uh, add more volume. You can see one thing I didn't clearly describe is that part of the pectoral is attached firmly to the top there, and that really helps if that's in there. And that's what gives you that um, this dip that you get here is where the, the delt, deltoid, and the top of the let's just be really clear and tuck that bicep underneath let's go back to the move tool I want that bicep in there deep tucking right inside give it a bit more volume and then I'm going to use that pinch tool deep inside and then the move tool have a good look at your model at this point because you can see where mine's going wrong um, because I've not been focusing from this angle. You can see how the it's lost volume. Um, so just go back. And one thing we didn't put in under here at all uh, in front of the latissimus dorsi is a quite clear definition in the obliques and the serratus muscles. So let's just add them in quickly. Again, this is about the arm, not about this area, but. Um, as we're modelling, it's nice to see it going in there. I'll just put it in roughly. Too accurate. Well, at least I can see the definition. And that tucks underneath the latissimus dorsi under here, this huge band of muscle. The, the one that we started to draw in before. Comes all the way down and wraps around. And that's what you see sometimes on uh, this is where you get your superhero um, serratus muscles. They're like this. If I draw them like this, you'll know exactly what I mean. So you see this in comic books. So they come like this. That's how we draw them in comic books, um, which is cool. Uh, and it's well good enough for to make them look good. Let's just put a few more lines in to make sure we're copying the, um, the reference. Um, remember the, the muscles that we've already laid down, so we've laid down the, the bicep, brachialis, brachioradialis, brachialis, shall we say, and then the two parts of the Two parts of the tricep going up here, and the second part in here, which is split into two, and that quite neatly gives us there's a bit of volume missing there. See how that tricep looked quite weak underneath. I do. Uh, I, I go to life classes um, every couple of years. I, I do a refresh and do a, a load of courses because my I find my anatomy if I don't keep it up uh, starts to suck in no time at all. Simply because I forget a lot of these rules and I can see things quite well, but then just remembering all of the insertion points and remembering the muscle groups, it's crucial for you to keep up that kind of. Especially if you're a character artist, you're probably doing it a lot more than I do, because I don't just do characters. Um, um, but human anatomy can take you to so many places, it's fantastic.
So I'm just going to have to unhide for a second because that forearm looks very stubby and short now. So let's unhide the whole model and just do a quick check. So the hand seems to be uh, probably a little bit in the wrong place. So let's just give myself a bit more forearm. Um, again, we're, we'll smooth this right down because we're not even going to touch the hand in this video. But I just want to make sure that the key points um, are in there. And it's crucial that um, that we know how the arm is laid out because when you, if an arm, if a hand is turned down, um, it's called pronated, and if it's turned up, it's called supinated. And that doesn't actually matter. It doesn't mean vertically up or down. It basically means if this hand here is twisted up or down, um, it's either pronated or supinated. So at the moment, you can see we've got it up and that means it's supinated if you were to keep this still and turn this over then that would be pronated and the two bones in there the ulnar and radius would twist across so the radius at this end twists across and that is one of the most crucial things to learn and it's clearly seen on this model that it's not twisted at all and let's just lay down some of those key muscles and show you what I mean because um, it's this is why um, doing the forearm is one of the hardest uh, muscle groups um, in the body uh, so I'll tell you what I will do I'm going to have to hide all that again because it's a real pain um, I don't want to see all that while I'm working um, my fingers are everywhere because we just want the arm. In fact, we can get rid of all this now. Okay, so you can see that the, the, the arm and the shoulder, we can keep smoothing that down and it looks better and better already. We haven't done anywhere near the final pass, but you've got all the right muscle groups in place um, all the way down to here, even where we smoothed them out and they've gone. So let's put a couple back in that we know. Um, let's turn slightly to the back of the figure. So we want to put in as the this is the bicep at the front, tricep at the back, brachialis in the middle. Let's move the figure out of the way. going to show you an image there but I'll show you in a moment okay so let's just start and lay down some of the, the, the main uh, muscles on here to just finish off try to do two things at once never a good idea okay we'll leave those marks in got our thumb clearly angled out correctly here. If we think of this as where the wrist is going to be. And, we're, and we've got two types of, uh, we've got two bones in here. We've got the ulna and the radius. And if we start, anything that comes to this point is the thumb, which is the radius. Um, just turn that off. The radius, and this is the ulna side here, which comes down here. There's an ulnar furrow that we'll do in a moment. So remember, this is the radial side. So let's just start. So the first one we'll lay down is the ridge muscles. So they come, and if you look on the model, they tuck in between the back of the brachialis muscle up here and underneath the tricep and come out as a group and twist around and they give you some chunky volume here on the forearm and it depends on whether your arm's supinated or pronated as to where they go to so on this point if your hand was pronated and turned they would go round the top and to your thumb here but as your hand is supinated turned up they tuck down here all the way down to the there we go all the way down to the bottom So 
top one, that you can see there, and that's the brachioradialis, goes all the way around, and the second ridge muscle there coming round, a little bit more volume in there, that's the extensor carpi radialis brevis, and I'm having to remember these, but in fact, it's difficult to remember them at first, but when you remember, um, anything that um, closes your fist, clenches your fist, um, is a flexor because it's flex. You know, if you flex your if you flex your fists, that's closing. Anything that opens that up then is an extensor. So at the minute we're looking at an extensor carpi, which is you've heard of carpal tunnel. So that's obviously down into the carpals down here. So extending out the carpals um, and it's radialis brevis so it goes to the radial which is here and brevis means short so um, good old Latin um, co comes around like so tucks under nicely tucks round nicely and again remember it comes all the way from the back up here I'm actually gonna just going to so as you can see it a little bit more um, subdivided it a little bit more so that you can see what I'm doing I wouldn't normally do that but I want you to see it oh, okay so that's that one done so then you've got your extensor carpi radialis brevis underneath it actually I'm telling you wrong there the uh, longus is the top one, the brevis is this one underneath. So longus and brevis, longus underneath, longus over the top, brevis underneath, brachioradialis on the top. And then, t told you it was difficult, um, you can see them quite clearly on the model, um, quite clearly. One thing that is cl clearly shown on the model is this band. Um, it protects the wrist here. Okay, and then we've got a couple of, mu of muscles that come across here and tuck under the thumb. So again, I'll have to remember it was abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. They come around here and under can see them quite clearly popping out on the model and they go across the extensor carpi radialis brevis which is that one so that was why it's crucial that we got that right before I, uh, before I moved on so they come across there and then they're covered by these bad boys which go right the way down here to your fingers so it's got, it goes all the way from here all the way down which is your extensor digitorum which is the huge one that drives the three main fingers so let me get it in and I'll show you what I mean um, if you were to see them a little bit closer there will be three like this one two three all come into one under that band and then out here as tendon and into this muscle here and it's clearly shown right out there again these two little fellas tuck under there and there we go we're going to cut this right back as, as we as we come round but it's good to have them quite prominent at the moment and the flattened brush will take care of a lot of this um, when we need it to okay so extensor digitorum there's one little one that controls your little finger. Stentia, it's the one that everyone laughs at, it goes all the way down to the little finger down here. That's digitorum, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi. And yes, it is correct, it's minimi, as in uh, you can put your little finger up to your mouth, like so. And then back down to extensor carpi ulnaris. Ulnaris meaning what? Goes to the ulnar side. We've done the radial side and the ulnar side. And then flexor carpi ulnaris is a big one down here, which we'll define better in a minute because we need to really clearly show 
the what's called the ulna furrow. I wanted to just put a bit of volume back here. So let's turn it around so we can see it. I'm actually turning the model. Just put those back in again. 52 minimi in there. Let's get that extensive digitorum in there a bit bigger. Extensive digitorum. So the thing that extends your digits. Minimes in there, and then that's extensive car field now. You see why I said this is complex, it's easy to get lost in here, um, but once you know the grouping, it's, it's very straightforward. So, just need to really define that this, we've done the minimi there, let's bring this from the end of the ulna. So this tucks under to the lateral epicondyle, which is basically this side of the elbow. Mm. Like so. You can clearly see that on the model, and then there's two things that to be to be mindful of here. They're clearly shown on uh, on the model. The thing that wraps across here underneath is the anconius, which is a little muscle under there. Sits under the uh, olecranon, which is the elbow here, and wraps across here and goes to this dip here which is your ulna furrow, which is where you can basically see your ulna inside there, coming to this point, and it's the bone, the flattened bone of the ulna in there. So, Anconius is across, like so. Extensor carpi ulnaris is across here. Have a good look at the model if you if you get lost at this point, and then on the opposite side of the ulna furrow, you got the huge or bigger flexi carpi ulnaris. So this is what flexes your carpals at the ulna side, if that's how you want to say it. So flexi to flex, carpi carpals, and it's on the ulna side. Remember radial side, ulna side. And don't forget, uh, that's, let's just do what I didn't do. And hide that baby again. It's just getting in the way. Let's make him a bit bigger because he's now nearly at the right size. I remember when I was starting, I drew um, just like a, like a tube here, one here and one here. Well, that was the olecranon, which is the end of the elbow there, which we've clearly still got. And then you had the lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle, the two sides of that bone, um, the, the end, the humerus. Um, and the, this one here, flexicarpial ulnaris, tucks up and attaches around there. So you've got to make sure that that meets. It's, it's a big muscle at the top. But make sure it's, it meets the... Uh, medial epicondyle in here. I think I just hit the history button so I might have to wait for a second. No. Nope. Oh yes I have. Quite good to show progress but we didn't want to do it right now. Um, so he's tucked underneath now um, and then we just come to the 
front again. So there's a few to get through, crucial ones to get in there. So your brachialis muscles coming in here. Now the end of the brachybicep brachialis. That this is your bra your bite. If you look at the front, you've got your bicep. He tucks in there and wraps around here. So let's get him in. Let's get the model quickly turning around. You can just about see that band coming around from the end of the bicep and it just tucks around underneath. And then we can get on the on the model some deep scoring in here, which gives you some of the uh, you start with where we started at the front, actually, don't you? So you've got your, your, your brachioradialis right at the front, like so. And then squeezed in between that, you've got these muscles that become, they go all the way, basically, to the underside of the palm. Um, put a little bit of definition in here. Not particularly accurate, but just enough to give me something to link to. Might cover the hand on a, on another video. So the hand's quite complex. Like I said, the the the, um, the forearm is complex. All so the hand's got its own set of complexities and scales, etc. Proportions. So let's get underneath here. So big one that goes under that muscle that we did there. Goes all the way back to the medial epicondyle. Tie the line around here. It's your flexor carpi radialis. longest which goes to the it's the one that goes to the medial epicondyle up here and there's a couple more in there um, hidden deep down and you can just make them out on the, on the model but we're not going to be get too intricate because I don't want to go too far down on that I'm going to do a smooth right across this now to, to smooth it back and show you where we're up to at this point. And I'll take the flat brush, flatten off a couple. Mm. Oops, not like that. And the move tool, just make sure as I'm looking at the reference, matched most of the volume. like an inflate brush to me than a move tool um, and then just with a bit of tweaking just match the shape that you know you've got right in front of you on the, on the model now the next pass I would definitely go in and flatten off some of these muscles Anconius doesn't show as well as that and some of these muscles are just way too big I've, I've put them in at this point to show where they go um, and they are clearly shown on the uh, on the uh, Ecochet model but you might want to go in and smooth that down uh, let's just go down the level again we'll delete those layers so we don't need any of those layers there we go, just done a mirror and weld. Um, what it does highlight, and we'll put symmetry on for a few minutes now, is where we've lost volume in the chest. So we've, we've been focusing on getting all the right muscles, but what we haven't focused on is, is volume. Um, so let's just have a look at the reference again. Just put this volume back. And what you'll find now, because you've got all the right muscles in there, I'm just turning the model, you 
don't need to see that bicep flexed. Um, there's a couple of muscles we missed out underneath, but they're not clearly shown um, for us here. So. see what I'm doing, I'm just following volumes now. Just making sure that elbow doesn't stick out too much. And again smooth it down. So we've only done uh where are we that much. That much. Well that's taken about um, I'm guessing in the region of half an hour, oh sorry an hour, 45 minutes an hour. So it wouldn't take that much longer to uh, to repeat that, you're only doing 50% of the body at this stage. But what that's done is, um, that's uh, that's shown how I would use the, the, the reference model um, quite clearly. Um, the muscles look fairly accurate at this stage, this is a very rough pass. Um, but it's got all of your key muscles in the right place, all grouped, <coughs> all laid down correctly, um, all shown on the, the 3D total model quite quite accurately. Um, some bulging and bumping that needs, well there's a lot that needs fixing, but it basically shows how you build it up. And it doesn't take that long once you've understood the, the, the volumes and the shapes of the body to, to get this accurate. So I'm going to keep working this model. Um, in a series of videos, because um, it's a great one that started literally from nothing, and it does it does give you a good indication of how to use the the full ecoche and the the planar, um, and and this one would be lovely to. Uh, I'll just do a quick say because I'd like to keep it at this stage, but it would be lovely um, to to knock this back to planar and keep that as a planar reference model, so you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just planing off um, as I would for the planar model so uh, we, we might get to that stage later on but that's the, uh, the laying down the muscles in the arm.